So in this video, I'm going to show you how I lit and shot these images. Hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So once again, today I am taking you behind the scenes during an actual wedding and show you how I lit and shot the images that I showed you earlier. But before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and would want to learn more about off-camera flash photography or maybe just lighting in general, then this channel is for you. So you might want to consider subscribing and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see more of my images, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Now, as I said earlier, I am taking you guys behind the scenes once again during an actual wedding. And I will show you a few behind the scenes photos of how the light affected the scene, the before and after photo also. So here goes. So let's start off with a very simple image. You can see here that my subject was underexposed because I wanted to control my highlights. That's why you could see here that the gown is properly exposed. However, I needed light on her face. Now, if you guys are familiar with the channel, you know that I love doing this because I like my light being unseen. In other words, I want the light to wrap around the subject's face, making it look as if it just came from one single light source and make it look as natural as possible. And that's exactly what I did here. The sun was coming from this direction. I had my light coming from here, so it made it look as if it was just wrapping around. And the light that I was using here is a continuous light. It's a Nanlite Forza 60B. It's important for me to have the bicolor version so that I can dial in the correct color temperature of the light and once again, try to make it as seamless as possible. And this is the final image. You could see how seamless the light came from here all the way here, casting that nice shadow here, getting that contrast and making it believable that the light was coming from this general direction. And once again, trying to make the light look unseen. So let me show you a few more images. Now with this image, you could see immediately that the scene is a bit underexposed. And the reason why I did that was because I was playing around trying to see how it would look like underexposed. But then I realized that Maybe with this particular layout, I wanted it to look light and airy. I could have easily just overexposed the scene and just blew out all the highlights. But for me personally, whenever I want to do light and airy images, I want to still be able to control my highlights. So this is what I did. I had my light put here right behind the subjects through the foliage. This is basically where I was shooting them. This is the angle in which I was shooting them. So the light was coming from here, mimicking the look of natural sunlight coming from the back. And the light that I was using here is my Photix Indra 500. This is a 500 watt battery operated flash and I needed 500 watts because I was shooting outdoor so my continuous light wouldn't work in this particular layout. So from here, this is the final image. This is the light coming from the Photix Indra and I had my light at full power, therefore giving me this light and airy look and yet I still controlled my highlights. And like I said earlier, my initial exposure was to see how the greens actually look like underexposed. Will the colors come out? And it actually did. And that's why in this image, as you can see, this is a properly exposed image. It's very nice already as is, but I wanted to create a bit more contrast and a bit more vibrance to the image. And that's why I had my light this time, still the Photix Indra 500 in front of the subjects. And this is the image that I got. So by underexposing the scene this time, I got greener greens and I got a bit more contrast and I got that pop of color that I wanted. So this next scene was somewhat complicating something rather simple, but I just wanted to push myself and see where I can go creatively. Now you guys be the judge, please do leave it in the comment section below if you think this image was worth the effort. Now the reason why I composed it this way the natural light coming from behind was because I wanted the light to be a kicker light. And at the same time, I wanted to shoot this side of the face of the bride because that is the side of the face that she actually prefers. I always make sure to shoot the angle that the subject prefers because no matter how beautiful the image is, if she feels that she is not good looking in that image, she will never love that image. So now because I had to shoot this side of the subject, the problem was I had no place to put the light because as you can see, this was foliage already. So this is my natural light serving as my kicker light. 
and this was a lot of plants, so I couldn't really put a light right there. So what I decided to do was put my light through all these foliage and just put it on full power and blast it and hope that we get good shadows, we get proper exposure. Basically just, as I said, complicating a very simple thing because I could have easily just put my existing ambient light behind them to serve as a kicker light and put the light in front of them. But then that wouldn't have been too challenging. That's why I honestly just wanted to challenge myself with this particular layout. And this is the final image. So the light coming from here, right here, was the light that you see here. And also, if you notice, I was lighting her short side, which was very important for me. Lighting the short side means that I'm lighting the side that is opposite from what my camera is seeing so that I get shadows on the side of the face near to the camera, therefore giving the illusion of slimming that person's face. So what do you guys think? Do you think that this particular image is worth the effort? Well, let me know in the comment section once again. Now, after shooting all those layouts outdoor, we decided to bring it indoor now and shoot some images inside the ballroom. And this time, instead of having my Photix Indra 500 since I was shooting indoor, I decided to use my Sony F60RM with a Magmod MagSpear, MagGrid, and MagGel. The reason why I had the MagGel was because I needed to match a color temperature to the existing ambient light, which you guys will see later. But at the same time, I also had my MagGrid so that I could focus the light. But at the same time, I also had the MagSphere to spread the light, so which is really counterintuitive. But it makes sense once you start using it because sometimes you don't want the light to spread too much. That's why you put a grid so that you could focus the light somewhat, but still have it spread out and slightly softer. So let me show you. This is the image straight out of my camera without any light except for the Sharpies that were coming from behind. So these Sharpies coming from behind is the light that you see right here. Now, of course, I expose for these Sharpies so that I don't overexpose the highlights. As I said earlier, I do love keeping my highlights in check. So I had my light here. And once again, as I said, this time I had my Mag Grid and my Mag Spear so that I can light this side of the face because the light was coming from here. And this is the final image. I had my light somewhat here. You could still see it actually right here. But I wanted it towards the very edge of the light to give this nice rim here and this nice highlight here. And at the same time, more or less, adjust my exposure so parts of their face here is seen. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please do like the video. And at the same time, subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell. Now, if you have any questions with regards to this video, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you want to see some of my images or more of my images, you can always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.